Welcome to this video from the McCoy Publishing Library. I'm Steve McCall. Today we're taking a look at a Masonic Encyclopedia. Coyle's Masonic Encyclopedia by Henry Coyle, revised by Alan Roberts, originally published in 1961 and revised in 1995. The history of this encyclopedia. In the late 1940s, V. Hansen, the new owner of McCoy Publishing and Masonic Supply, wanted to publish an excellent Masonic encyclopedia. The author for such a project was all important, so she turned to Henry Wilson Coyle, a California Freemason and lawyer. He agreed to use his vast knowledge of Freemasonry and tackle the job. He also enlisted the aid of three other Masons who had written extensively about the craft. William Mosley Brown of Virginia, Harold Van Buren Voris of New Jersey, and William Leon Cummings of New York agreed to work with Coyle. In 1961, 20 years after she began the process, McCoy proudly made Coyle's Masonic Encyclopedia available to the Masonic world. It was acclaimed immediately by Masonic historians, writers, researchers, and individuals. Harry Carr reviewed Coyle's work for the transactions of the Qatar Coronati Lodge in 1961. Carr was never overly generous in his praise of other authors. However, in this encyclopedia, he liked what he found. Carr said, the makeup of Coyle's Masonic Encyclopedia contained virtues we are fully entitled to expect in a well-produced book. Carr continued, the book claims one characteristic which would distinguish it from some of its predecessors. After a brief reference to, quote, the ancient myths and mysteries, unquote, which have always featured over strongly in Masonic history, Brother Coyle says, quote, a major endeavor of the present work has been to refrain from telling too much, that is, more than is known to be true. A great deal has been written about Freemasonry that never happened." Unquote. It must be agreed that Brother Coyle has, this is Carr's continued review, it must be agreed that Brother Coyle has made a wholly praiseworthy effort to avoid this pitfall. Indeed, this is one of the rare cases in which it may be said that occasionally the author errs on the side of caution, and that is perhaps a result of his legal training. Carr then closed his review by writing, I have found the work well written, in a pleasantly informal style, full of well-presented detail, covering an enormous range of subjects in a workmanlike and interesting fashion. The Revised Edition. In 1995, McCoy asked respected author Alan E. Roberts to update and revise the immense work of Coyle. Roberts states in his foreword, quote, change is all around us. Even as we read this brief item, this is in 1995, thousands of changes have taken place. Communism, for example, when Coyle work was published in 1961, controlled much of what had been the free world. This situation has changed dramatically in the 90s. The beneficiaries of those who love freedom and especially those Freemasons who believe in the brotherhood of man under the fatherhood of God, unquote. So why buy an encyclopedia when we have the internet? Well, <clears throat> as many of you probably do, I suggest to a prospective candidate of Freemasonry to avoid going online to research the craft. I like to say, tongue-in-cheek, everything you read about Freemasonry on the internet is true. When Robert started his project in the mid-90s, he stated about the internet, quote, today the world is linked instantaneously by computers. A Masonic forum of one of the largest services, the internet, has found some of the most knowledgeable Freemasons in the world exchanging opinions and information, unquote. Ah, we were so innocent in 1995. Little did we know that the internet would become quite a different place. There is an exchange of opinions and information on the internet, but little of it is from the most knowledgeable Freemasons in the world. 
Coyle and his team and then Roberts spent years researching their information. It was edited by some of the best and brightest minds of the craft. The answers in this book were written by accomplished Freemasons, men who spent decades serving Freemasonry and who were also accomplished authors themselves. Now, don't get me wrong. The Internet does have some wonderful information, but this encyclopedia gives you a basis to check that information. And especially when you have a burning Masonic question and you whip out your computer that's in your pocket to get the answer. You see, our fraternity is deep and rich. It does not reveal itself like some barroom dispute, like say who sold more records, ABBA or the Beatles. If, if your source for the insights of Freemasonry is the internet only, you may be selling yourself very, very short. The revised Coils Encyclopedia remains one of the best sources for well-researched, well-documented works on Freemasonry while allowing the mysteries of our craft to exist. It might seem old fashioned to refer to a printed book for answers that seems so easy to find in this digital age, but your work in the craft may just require it. I hope you've enjoyed today's book highlight and as always, stay on the level.